Okay, so let's go back to uh, Newton's first law. Uh, and Newton's first law stated that if we took some object and we threw it, and there weren't any other forces acting on it, right? The object would move in a straight line at a constant speed forever and ever and ever, okay? Uh, but if there was an outside force acting on it, then it would not do that. It would presumably either change its speed or its direction if there was a force acting on it, okay? Now, so far, all we've done is we've changed the speed. So, for example, um, this guy right here, um, you know, if the ball is moving, say, to the right, if we had, if the velocity was that way and we exerted a force on it that way, right, then it accelerated positively, it went faster and faster, right? And if we exerted a force this way, right, this caused a negative acceleration, this caused a positive acceleration. And that acceleration was, you know, change in velocity over time. It was in meters per second squared. Um, and we were like the kings and queens of that, right? Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the, say the baseball is gonna go Let's say it's you know still flying to the right like that. Okay, if we want it to turn right, if we want it to go in a path like this, right? What we do is we exert a force to the side. Yeah. Okay. So if we want it to turn right, we exert a force to the right. This is really pretty simple, right? Okay. And if we want to turn, make it turn left, if we want to make it go like this, right? Okay. Then we exert a force to the left. Okay. Now. In the past, what we did was we had the speed change, but the direction did not change. This was linear acceleration. Okay. We didn't call it linear acceleration because we didn't know there was any other kind. Okay. Now we're going to talk about an acceleration where the speed doesn't change, but the direction does change. Right. This type of acceleration is called a centripetal acceleration. Okay, and centripetal acceleration just means toward the center. So take, for example, this thing. If you imagine this thing here could, would go eventually in a full circle, right? That force is, of course, toward the center. To make something go in a circle, you've got to exact push on it all the time toward the center. And that's a centripetal force, and it causes a centripetal acceleration, okay? So you can derive this formula if you have calculus and if you don't have calculus you can just confuse people trying to derive it with algebra but there it is the the, the formula for centripetal acceleration is that it's the the velocity squared divided by r r is the radius of your circle right and that's in meters uh, v is the tangential velocity that's in meters per second and a is in this case the centripetal acceleration okay and we can we can uh, multiply centripetal accelerations by force and get centripetal force just using F equals MA. And that's what we'll do. We'll do that in the next video. I'm going to chunk that one out. Okay? So this velocity here, notice that this, of course, solves the mystery of how can you exert a force on the object but never change its speed. Notice that the force is acting this way. Right? That acceleration there should be right here. The force is acting toward the center. And toward the center is radially inward, right? And a tangent at a point on a circle is always at right angles. And so if that force is always at right angles to the velocity, it never makes the velocity longer or shorter. It just changes the direction of it, which should make sense. Okay. Let me do an example of this for you. Okay. Uh, not this one. I'm going to put it on this page. There's the answers. Oh, my God. Don't look at the answers, right? Oops. Let's go back here. Okay, so here's an example. Um, a car, a 1,200 kilogram car going 24 meters per second around an 80 meter radius corner. Uh, what, is, uh, what is the acceleration? What is the force? What is the coefficient of friction? So this is, you know, the, the, the finest example, the mother of all examples, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is find the acceleration. Acceleration is going to be V squared divided by R, and that's 24 squared, and that's meters per second squared divided by 80 meters, right? Got to put parentheses in. You want the equal opportunity parentheses in, right? Okay, and then 24 squared uh, divided by 80. I'm doing that all in one swell foop is 7.2 meters per second squared. And then the you know the, the the units here are meters squared per second squared times meters is just meters per second squared. So it does have the right units to be an acceleration. Indeed, it is. That is the right formula. Okay. And then to find the force, force is easy. Force is just ma, right? So the mass is 1,200 kilograms, 
right? And the acceleration is 7.2, right? And so I'm just going to go times 1,200, and that's 86.40, right? So there's our centripetal force. And we'll, we'll make a new formula, right? We can actually say F equals M V squared over R if we want to make a separate formula for centripetal acceleration, right? And then, then what is the minimum coefficient of friction? Well, if the force of friction is mu times M times G, that is, this is a level road, it's not banked, right? Then we're just going to say that that equals this, this centripetal ex acceleration, the centripetal force, right? Okay. So we're going to set that equal to 8640, right? So 8640 newtons equals mu, which we don't know, mass, which is 1,200 kilograms, and then the, ex, uh, let's see, g is 9.8, right? All right, so mu times m times g, right? So I'm going to do 8640 divided by 1,200 divided by 9.8, and I get uh, mu is equal to 0.73469 or something like that, right? Okay, so, so about 0.73, right? So here are our answers there. Let me just show you one last thing with that because this is a real standard um, thing that happens is that the friction equals a centripetal force, right? So you can just start right off and say mu mg equals uh, mv squared over r, right? And the M's will cancel, right? So, so a heavier car has more friction, but requires more force to go around the corner. And so you can go mu times 9.8 equals, and then V squared over R was 7.2, right? And then you end up just straight out 7.2 divided by 9.8 is uh, your accelerator, the mu that you need, right? 7, 3, 4, 6, 9, all these things, right? Okay. Anyway, there you go. That's that's how you do it. There's going to be a bunch of examples. Um, in the next pictured video, I'm going to show you the whole thing with force. Um, but if you get this, you sort of get it. So there it is.